Hello, everyone. Welcome to our concert tonight. Uh, I hope everyone is doing well wherever you are. Uh, my name is Aaron Frank. I am a co-founder and CEO of the America's Chamber Orchestra. Um, I'd like to introduce you to our second concert of our mini concert series. Uh, we, we had the idea of bringing these concerts to the public over the course of this summer as we're all at home. And we wanted to present different members of our orchestra to perform and to present some of their musical interests to the public. Today, we have a very interesting presentation. Um, our music director, our, the conductor of the America's Chamber Orchestra, Diego Barbosa Vasquez is going to lead a discussion about the role of the conductor in the orchestra. If you joined us last week, I performed myself. I played a few of my songs on the guitar. And um, as we evolve this series, every musician will be performing three or four pieces of their own repertoire representing music that they've been practicing. Uh, today will be an interactive discussion where some of us will be playing a little bit later a few uh, notes on our instruments. But the, the point of today is to talk and to discuss the role of the orchestra, of the conductor in the orchestra. So I'd like to welcome everyone again, uh, especially our friends in Indianapolis with SADCO, the Society of Friends of Colombian Friends in Indianapolis. Before we begin, I'd like to just read uh, Diego's biography and let everyone know a little bit about his experience and what he brings to the orchestra. So uh, Diego Barbosa Vasquez is a Colombian born opera and orchestral conductor, music director of the America's Chamber Orchestra, this orchestra that we're presenting to you. He is a doctoral student at the Jacobs School of Music at Indiana University music director of the Opera Summer Camp in Los Angeles, California. And he has been referenced by the international press as a musical genius and synonymous of energy, knowledge, and confidence of high artistic quality. Due to his outstanding international career, Maestro Barbosa Vasquez was named a 2017 ambassador of the Colombian Country Band. He has been a guest conductor for the 70th anniversary of the UNICEF concert. Uh, the Colombian maestro has won international recognition since conducting in El Salvador in 2014, where he won first international opera conductors competition in Belgium 2017 and the Nino Rota International Conducting Competition in Italy 2018. In, in both cases, he represented Latin America. In addition, he was special guest lecturer at the 11th European Orchestra Festival and the WFAO General Assembly in Norway and special guest lecturer at the WFAO General Assembly in Singapore, also representing Latin America. So lots of places, many, many places around the world. Diego has been guest conductor of the Wabash Valley Youth Symphony, which I was actually a violinist in for a few years. OCSA Symphony Orchestra, California, Youth Symphony Orchestra, El Salvador, Calda Symphony, um, Choir and Founding Orchestra of Esperanza Azteca program in Mexico. He has been artistic and music director of the World Symphony, World Music Symphony Orchestra in California, Music and Artistic Director of Wheela Philharmonic, Symphony Orchestra of Wheela Conservatory, and Rock Symphony Orchestra. Diego holds a master's degree with honors in opera and orchestral conducting at Azusa Pacific University in California, and a maestro in music degree from Juan Corpas University Music School in Bogota, Colombia. Graduated with honors with major in conducting and minors in viola and chamber music. Furthermore, he is graduated from the Global Leaders Program, which is under the Orchestra of the Americas as conductor and violist. 
His principal conducting professors are Arthur Fagan from Indiana University, Christopher Russell, Azusa Pacific, and Jorge Alejandro Salazar from Corpas University in Colombia. An amazing musician, a great friend, and a great human being, Diego Barbosa Vasquez. Enjoy. Well, good night to everyone. Thank you so much, Aaron, for this amazing presentation. I just want to clarify one detail. I didn't want the Belgian Opera Conducting Competition. I did. I enjoy a lot this competition, but I didn't want it. But thank you so much for this amazing, amazing uh, presentation. And thank you all for being here with us in this mini concert series, as Aaron said. It's a way to stay connected with the music at this moment. And it's a way to present uh, for you our musicians, not only from the musical perspective, but also for the human perspective. And try to know who are the musicians of the America's Chamber Orchestra as humans and as a, and as a person. Therefore, um, thank you so much also, uh, SADCO, our official sponsor of this mini concert series. Eh, un saludo para toda la comunidad latina que nos está escuchando a través de estos conciertos. Un placer que nos estén acompañando. And well, as we said, and as Sarah said, today is a moment to talk a little bit about conductors, what the conductors do. And I want to start this concert presenting to you one of of the pieces that I, that I have, that I feel a, a good connection, that is the Tchaikovsky Fifth Symphony. And I didn't understand, but I felt a very close connection with the Russian music until I, I had a Russian roommate. And seeing how the cultures from Russia and Colombia actually are very close. We have simi similar kind of family approach, even similar foods, probably with a totally different name, obviously, but with the same kind of taste and even ingredients. Even when, uh, when we were doing the concert on February 23rd with the America's Chamber Orchestra, with our soloist in residence, Elisabetta Glatze, that is also Russian, and she gave she provided to the orchestra an amazing dinner um, and I remember that we had specifically the same kind of flavors with a totally different name therefore was a, a huge revelation why I feel so close the, the Tchaikovsky music to us therefore let's enjoy a little bit about this piece and let's see how how this can explain a little bit about conducting Thank you. 
Well, this concert brought me many, many memories. Was the orchestra of the Azusa Pacific University, the place where I did my master degree. I really enjoyed a lot uh, being there. Uh, so, so many nice people there. And, and well, have I guess for many people, this is the first moment when you have the orchestra perspective from a concert and the conductor's perspective from seeing the face of the conductor. Normally, as you notice in concerts, we are just giving back to the public. Therefore, today is a very special moment because we are seeing what those kind of things really mean. And in order to understand better what, what the conductor do actually with an orchestra, it's better to, let's try to become a conductor for a moment. And the exercise is very simple. I wanna put my hand, and when my right hand hits my left hand, you're gonna say a ta. It's very simple. Ta. Ta. Now, let's try to do the same without the hand, but imagine that the hand is here. Ta. Ta. This kind of exercise, you can do it with another person and you can change the tempos. Pa, pa, or faster. Pa, 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 pa. Therefore, the first aspect of the conductor, as you notice, is given the tempo. Very simple. How the whole music is gonna go, how fast or how slow. This is the first principle, but do you know what is the crazy part about this? Is that actually the professionals do that totally alone. They don't need us to do the tempo. Uh, and the more professional and the more experienced the musician, the less help they need with the tempo. In the cases of our orchestra, the America's Chamber Orchestra, there is so many great musicians here. They don't even for that. Also, they can start alone a piece. Therefore, they don't need me even for start a piece. And if we analyze that the composers already give us plenty of information, meaning that they given the notes, the starting pitch, the starting tempos, what this is really doing. If it's not about tempo, because the tempo is a very basic thing that the professional can do alone, what are we for? To understand that a little bit more, I want to share with you a different but closely connected piece, the Rachmaninoff Piano Concerto Number no. 2, a concerto that I did with a close friend, Jesus Toro, a Venezuelan, uh, pianist, amazing pianist, and in where you can try start to understand how my gestures, in addition of giving the tempo, is even another details. Let's see if you can get which kind of details the conductor is given to the orchestra. <laughs> Thank you. 
Well, as you notice now, is a little bit more than just tempo. Obviously, the tempo or the the speed of the performance in the excerpt that we just hear is changing a lot. That's why I needed to change many times the tempo here. And when you are dealing with a soloist also, the tempos normally change a lot between, between the sections. Obviously, at this moment, the importance of conductor is, is increasing now. But if we analyze that a composer already give us this kind of information, that means he's given us which instrument is playing what, which kind of notes or pitch each instrument needs to play, how long did these notes needs to play, needs to be, and which is the dynamic or how forte or how piano, how strong or how soft each kind of note is going is need to be played why the conductor is so important because if he's a professional musician that knows this and that all the information is already there why a conductor is important and in order to explain that um, i'm gonna do a little experiment with our musicians of the america's chamber orchestra three of our musicians here are going to help us do a little experiment. I'm going to uh, stop the sharing screen and I'm going to see them in the in our chat. And as you notice in the previous slide, they are going to play a simple scale, simple exercise. Uh, and I won't say anything more. Just can you help me playing what you saw in the screen? I'm gonna share that again one more time for you in order that you can have just a time to refresh your mind what is in the score. And this is kind of the pieces that you normally are gonna get from the conduct from the composer. The pitch, the tempo, the dynamic, and obviously the team. The timber is going to be defined by each specific instrument that we are going to play. Therefore, let's start ladies first. Let's start with the viola. The viola is going to play exactly what is in the score. Let's see what happens. Hello, Maya, welcome. She is our amazing violist of the America's Chamber Orchestra and our marketing director. Welcome. Nice to meet you. OK. So I'm just going to play the scale, right? Whatever is in the score, I won't say anything. Uh, <laughs> you want me to share again the screen? Yeah, can you? One more time. Yeah. Maybe people can see it. There we go. Oh. Perfect, that's so good. Now, our amazing percussionist, Stephanie Cohen, that also is Colombian. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, can you help us play the sport that you are saying? Remember, it's the same thing for all people. All righty. Now, our great CEO, Aaron Frank, and concertino of the American Chamber Orchestra. Wonderful. First of all, for the people that are seeing us in the Facebook Live, do we hear exactly the same kind of music, or we hear different versions of the same thing? As you notice, each person was playing a different scale, a different kind of musical, was producing a different kind of music. In the terms of Maya, was one tempo. In terms of Stephanie, was a faster tempo. And I don't did like in a middle range. In terms of dynamics also, they didn't do exactly the same dynamics. 
However, from a perspective, they play exactly what is in the score. Now you are going to see a little bit of work of the conductor in a very uh, special example for you. But can you do me a favor? Can you, can you play at this tempo? This is going to be a word 60. And also, can you do a separate pose? Bam, 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 bam. Okay, Adam, can you do the same, please? Trying to keep the same kind of vibrato that Maya used. Okay, can you help me playing with a little of separation as Maya did? Not so on the string. Separate, down, bam, bam. Okay, Stephanie, can you help me to end the same? You just separate a little bit from the piano. Okay, can you help me to end the same kind of rhythm as Maya and Arundi a little bit faster? Okay, very good. Let's do it now. Can you do do me uh, another favor. Let's start again with Maya. Can you do a crescendo to the B flat? Fa, sol, la, si, and from the A and the B, you are gonna connect the line. The others are separate, and from the A to the B flat, you are gonna connect. Okay, remember that from F, G and A, we are going to separate. Fa, Sol, La, Si. Can we do that, please? Wonderful. Can you do the same, Adam, please? And Stephanie, can you help me doing the same? Yep. Okay, remember that we are gonna connect A to the B flat. La C and you get it. Wonderful. As you see now, we finally have one version of the scale. We start with the same kind of details for all the musicians. We have the tempo defined by the composer. The tempo was defined by the composer. The notes were defined by the composer. The dynamic was defined with the composer. But there are some specific things about the notation in music that you cannot put in a score, even if you are a very, very demanding co composer or very Data composer. It's just music is so much than just what is here. And that's the role of the conductor. As you see, my role was trying to get all people with just one kind of, of version of the music. Now, as you can imagine, thank you so much for our amazing musicians for this experiment. Now, as you can see, uh, this is like a, a score of the of a, of a piece. In this case, it's El Carbonero, a very great piece from El Salvador. We were uh, with another orchestra uh, analyzing this piece. And as you saw in the previous example, there were just four notes. Now, let's imagine to do the same with seven with 50 set of instructions per instrument. Look at all of these little details are instructions for every single instrument. As you saw in the previous one, there is just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight instructions. Imagine how many instructions are just per this line 
and also then multiply that for it the instrument, how many instruments needs to have the same kind of detail. And obviously, the more notes that you are, you can do different kind of combinations. As we already did, did you remember that we connect this note? But we can define not connect this note and connect these two notes, or connect just this, this first two note and don't connect these ones. Therefore, the amount of decisions that you need to make in just one page is a lot. And also each page, each four or five or six pages just contain one minute of music. There is so many decisions to be made at the moment of a concert. And this, that is why we start to understand the concept of the conductor. Really, our job is trying to get all of these details in just one single concert, one single way of thinking of the music in order to be coherent with the whole field. Therefore, what we do as conductors actually, more than just doing a pa, pa, is realize how we are going to be sure First of all, which kind of musical decisions are the good ones and how to do this with the orchestra. Therefore, the conductors, we need to know the score even better than the composer. And I'm going to explain this in, in very deep. First of all, our first role is understand why each single note is there. Why I have a B flat at the end of the previous example, and I don't have a C or a D. Why I have the notes in house or whatever. And to understand that, depending on our experience with the composer and our experience with the music itself, we need to use as many resources as we can. Sometimes we need to understand the historical background, understand the overview, the structure, the texture, the orchestral techniques, what are the basic elements that allow the composer to create the music, understand all the vertical models and how the music is organized vertical and also the horizontal, understand the style. And all of these things is just to understand one little reason why each single note is in the place where it's in the score. If we understand that, we started to have the knowledge and the tools to add an, an interpretation. In the case of the previous example that I requested a crescendo and a little emphasis to the A was a result of a uh, thinking that we are tonicizing B flat, just to give an example. That was just for notes, but just to give an example. Therefore, what we are trying to get here as conductors is the whole essence of the music. Why all the things are here? Why there is a, a contrabass playing the same note as a tuba and as a fagot? Why there is why, why, why? If we understand that as conductors, we can then start to become, okay, the contrabass is duplicating the fagot, and also the tuba is duplicating the fagot. Therefore, the main instrument is the fagot, and then the others are gonna play behind the fagot. This could be an option. But if we understand that the composer and the whole structure of the line is more than the strings are the primary instruments and the good winds and the winds are the secondary instruments. The real bass is the contrabass. And the fagot and the tuba needs to blend with the contrabass. Therefore, those kind of things allow us to create interpretation. And after this interpretation is done, we need to become the music. We as conductors, what are trying to do is become the path when the whole music is going to go through the musicians. Therefore, uh, to do that, we need to do 
something that is very important that is take all, all of this music and create a concept in our head from the head connect to the to the heart and this is going to be our interpretation and we have now as you notice if i do i am not producing any kind of music i am not doing music to do that i need musicians therefore one of the factors that i say why the conductor needs to know the music even better than the composer is because the composer is is his job and his artistry is to make the music but in the paper our state these amazing instructions and all of this to become the real music with the musicians and to do that we have two main um, tools the first is the conductive technique that means all of these gestures all of these gestures what is going to help us is to bring the information that the musicians need normally nowadays we as conductor has two three or maybe four rehearsals that means eight hours of music to rehearse one hour of music have you noticed that in our little example with uh, maja aaron and stephanie we took a lot of time probably like two or three minutes to get probably just 30 seconds obviously because was just talking therefore the part of the conducting technique is be able to share all of this information all of the reflection all of this interpretation without needing to say anything just showing and the orchestra is going to react to this showing and the music that has in the stands and it's going to create the music therefore in terms of conducting technique there is many schools of conducting there are tons of books there are so many people that is you need to rebound or rebound this and so many exercise but at the end to, to do a little uh, little condensation of all of this information is you need to be the music if you are the music you are gonna uh, create a sense of come with me and do this kind of music and it takes time to obviously get used to to be the music in my case for instance one of the tools that help me a lot to do that is memorize so as you know the musicians that have played with me i memorize almost 99 percent of my scores because it allowed me in a better way to be music to be music and to share this energy with the music with the musician sorry without being just attentive to a score in front of me just i totally don't get this barrier and I communicate directly with the music and this is for me it's important not all the conductors do that but I believe it's so important to create these kind of connections also in terms of conducting that I if there is a good conductor you know when he is really conducting an orchestra because he's reacting to the information that the orchestra is giving sometimes if the orchestra with that sounds with the sound that you like and the whole things that you like you don't need more but if you do that and the orchestra don't react with the sound that you like you need to change your gesture until you get the sound that you need therefore this is called react to the orchestra needs and it's very important because the more experience you are you are gonna get better results of the orchestra just because you know how to react immediately to the to the environment the second tool that we have is rehearsal technique as you know as you know now we as conductor has really little time to rehearse in the case of the united states normally two rehearsals are the normal two, three rehearsals that is so much time therefore we need to be 
totally clear in how we are going to manage our time and spend the time in the things that we know that with that we are going to get the whole interpretations and don't waste time in things that we know that the orchestra is going to do. That's why you need to know very clear which kind of instruments are you dealing with and more important, which kind of people are playing these instruments because this is the complexity of conducting. You are dealing with people and dealing with people means dealing with the sensations of the people, dealing with the mood of the people, dealing with even egos sometimes. Therefore, you need to manage all of that in order in your rehearsal time you accomplish as much as you can and um, creating the good mood of the orchestra to create a, a cohesive uh, work. Therefore, if you want to be a great conductor, you need Need to know how all instruments work. I mean, you need to know how the strings work, how the woodwinds, how the percussion works. Not be an expert. It's impossible to play all the instruments as an expert, but at least you need to know how it works. In my case, I am so grateful because I had the opportunity to play at least one instrument per, per family and know how it really works. And believe me, it helps a lot because you understand how to talk with this, with the people that is playing that. And also from the perspective of knowing your orchestra, you need to know the people, you need to know, look at this person has a little um, uh, ego problem, or this person is very shy and he needs to, to be talked in a way, a specific way, or this person, when you put so much energy, she just explodes with energy and you cannot control therefore you start seeing and knowing the faces and knowing the mood and with this kind of information is when you can really make music and in order to to explain you that with a clear um, example the next piece that we are going to listen and the last piece is Colombia Terra Querida. Colombia Terra Querida is our non-official anthem in Colombia. And all the Colombians know that. Therefore, the first moment that I did that was, was in Colombia with Calda Symphony Orchestra when I was conducting uh, the orchestra as conductor. And obviously, because it was a Colombian orchestra, Colombian percussionist, all the orchestra really know so many of how to play Colombia Terra Querida. My job there was to really just clarify some little details from the orchestra and just have fun in the, in the concert. However, when I did that in other places, I encountered different challenges where the same music, where the same instruments, but the people was different. And after doing that in different countries, I noticed that the best way to conduct this kind of music is really going to what we already saw. First of all, understanding the whole concept of music that you have in your mind, understanding each reason of why each rhythm, each note, each line is in the place where it is. And with that, and the knowledge of, okay, now this is the orchestra that has this kind of strengths and this kind of weakness, weaknesses, we are going to work with that. And I encountered some cases where I needed to play percussion. And I remember my days when I was in the marching band playing percussion and trying to remember all my knowledge about that. I'm playing the percussion parts with the Colombian flow in order to, to explain to the percussionists that we're not used to these kind of rhythms. In the case of Colombia Terra Querida, for the percussion, we have just simple patterns. But you need to play with a little floor in your, in your, in your blood to, in order to get the real cumbia rhythm. In terms of the strings also, you need to get some kind of articulations 
as we notice, short or long. Those kind of things help me to develop the piece in a way that really sounds as a Colombian piece. It's not just the notes, it's also understanding the whole concept. And most important as a conductor, more than understanding, is sharing with the orchestra and really convince the orchestra to go with this vision. Therefore, without saying uh, more words, let's enjoy the Colombia Tierra Querida, in this case, but uh, an orchestra that I uh, have a, a close relation with, that is El Salvador, El Salvador Youth Symphony Orchestra, playing Colombia Tierra Querida from Lucho Bermudez, a regiment of or Oscar Trujillo. Enjoy.
this kind of music gave me so many great memories. I did, I have done this piece so many times and always is so amazing the energy that, that this music produced in the orchestra. I just remember the concert that we had with the America's Chamber Orchestra on February 23rd and was so amazing also the energy that the orchestra gave to the public and the public to the orchestra also. And uh, we really, really appreciate the, the community interaction with us and because it's the fundamental part of an orchestra. As you notice, I'm trying to encourage the public to be with us because the music needs both uh, parts, needs the performers, but also needs the community. That's why we as an orchestra are very involved with the community development. And that's why we created a GoFundMe page in order to, to build this community around the orchestra. The link is in the description. And if you feel that the America's Chamber Orchestra is a good way to, to create community around the music, we really appreciate your help with that. Also, we appreciate the help of SATCO and all the donations are very uh, appreciated to continue building the community around this amazing orchestra. The videos now are in, in post-production, we hope in the next months, some of the videos of the concert are gonna be available for a lot of you. And we are preparing an amazing 2021 season uh, with chamber music, with symphonic concerts, symphonic choral opera, and a lot of things for all of you. Uh, and we hope you can be with us and support us in the GoFundMe link um, and help us to be connected with the people. Uh, thank you so much for being with us this night. I just want to invite you to our next concert. Remember, we have concerts all Fridays at 8 p.m. EDT. Our next concert is with an amazing cellist, our cellist Tamachi Goodson, that actually is in charge also for, of the community development. She's the director of community development. Therefore, see you next Friday. Thank you so much for being with us. Have a great weekend.